Howdy everyone, Tom Webster here. Um, I want to start a new kind of video series. Um, I've always liked teaching people things and uh, I've always been fairly good at tech stuff. So I figured I could start teaching people certain things about computers, about you know hacking around with stuff, just fun cool stuff to do um, through Google Plus Hangouts. So if you want to join, I'm on Google Plus, just look up Tom Webster, you'll find me. I'm the my profile picture is currently the guy with the crazy, awesome, 70s-ish glasses. Um, but uh, today I want to discuss TrueCrypt, just the basics, nothing crazy, you know, how to hide your files, how to protect your data, how to protect your privacy. Uh, if you're a Dropbox user and you're concerned that Dropbox can now see your files, I mean, it's been that way for, for a while now. But uh, if you want to keep that from happening, TrueCrypt is the solution. So I'm going to show you how to create a volume. How to create a hidden volume, which is really cool, and I'll explain what that is later. Um, and uh, I'll also explain a little bit more after this is over about what I'm trying to accomplish with these and what I need from you. Uh, first off is a name. Uh, so this, these are kind of going to be show and tell sort of things. I'm doing this all through Google Plus Hangouts so people can come and join and share their knowledge. You know, cool stuff they've been doing, cool stuff they've run into, and... We'll all just kind of collaborate and uh, get to learn some stuff. So, without further further ado, let's get to it. So, the first thing you need to do is you need to go download TrueCrypt. Luckily for you, you can do that for free at TrueCrypt.org. Now, if we go to Downloads, they've got it for everything. It's totally cross-platform. We've got all the major versions of Windows out right now. We've got Mac OS X. We've got a couple different flavors for Linux. It all works perfectly. And best of all, it's all free. So you just click download, it downloads. Now, I've got it downloaded already, it's already installed, so we're going to go ahead and get to it. TrueCrypt. So, TrueCrypt is used to create kind of, think of it, if you can make a, uh, a flash drive out of a file on your computer and have only you be able to open it with your secret password. That's what TrueCrypt is like, and it's, it's a little hard to explain in just words, so I'm going to show it to you. The first thing we want to do after we open TrueCrypt is we need a place to put secret files. Secret files like this. I'm going to go ahead and make a new Word document here. My secret stuff. Now I'm going to write down all my passwords here. So password, dog1234 and uh, password with a zero instead of an O. Those are all my passwords, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, I don't want anyone getting this, so we're going to make a TrueCrypt volume. So, first thing we're going to do is click Create Volume. Lots of options, lots of text, lots of things to read. If you follow along with me, you don't have to read any of it. Um, it's a good idea to read it. You probably should read it, and I find it really interesting, but you might not. This is the fastest way to get stuff safe. So uh, we want to do, obviously, we want to create an encrypted file container. Just go ahead and hit next. Standard TrueCrypt volume, that's fine. I'll discuss what a hidden volume is later. They're really, really cool and really, really powerful. We'll go ahead and hit next. We're going to do standard. Select file. Go ahead and click the select file button. You're going to tell TrueCrypt where you want to put your, your encrypted vault, basically. So I'm going to call this vault, if I can spell, there we go. We're going to go ahead and hit save. I'm actually going to put a, uh, a .tc on the end of this, just because, just so I will know that it's a TrueCrypt volume. You don't have to put the .tc, it will, you can name it docx, you can name it exe, you can name it whatever you want, TrueCrypt will open it. Next. Encryption algorithm. If you leave all the defaults here, you will be more than safe. It is just fine to leave everything as it is. If you want to be super crazy secure, you can choose a different one. I personally love AES. It's very fast. It's very easy to use. If you want to get crazy with it, you can combine all three of them, and they all use separate keys, and they're all independently secure. For now, we're just going to do AES. Your hash algorithm, again, big nerd talk here. Uh, you don't have to worry about this, ever. 
Um, all these are tried, they're true, they're safe for today. In 10 years or so, can't guarantee it, but right now, perfectly safe. If you're absolutely concerned about everything, pick Whirlpool. Whirlpool's good. I like Whirlpool. Hit next. Now we need to choose, and this is important, we need to pick how big our vault is going to be. Now you can make a vault that's 10 megs, if you want. A very small vault. Very easily portable. You, you can email it to people on most email services. I'm going to pick something a little bit bigger. I'm going to do one gigabyte. And again, in the big scheme of things, one gigabyte isn't really that big, but it can fit a lot of stuff, especially if we're just putting in, you know, a couple pictures and Word documents. I mean, that it takes a lot of Word documents to get up to one gigabyte. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. This, the password, the volume password. I must tell you this. The most important part about TrueCrypt is to use a big secure password. If you don't use a big secure password, it negates everything. If I put password as my password, somebody can just walk up and type password and the vault is open. It's, it's that easy. The password is the only thing standing between you and the people that want to get to your data. So choose something crazy. Right now, I'm just going to pick password since this is only a demonstration. Um, a good password is going to be about 20 characters. Um, uh, I use a password that's that's about 30, personally, and it's more of a passphrase. You can do that. Uh, 20 is definitely recommended. If you use the word password, it's as good as not even using TrueCrypt. So keep that in mind. One other thing to keep in mind, and this is the biggest warning ever. If you lose your password, if you forget your password to your TrueCrypt volume, there are no back doors. Let me repeat that. No back doors. Your data is locked away forever. Ever. Until somebody comes out with some crazy awesome supercomputer that can crack AES. Currently, with a really good password, with AES-256, you're looking at more than a lifetime in human years worth of the computer just sitting and trying to crack that thing. You're not getting it back. Remember your password. Don't write it down, but make the password something you can remember. So let's go ahead and hit next. And again, because I used a bad password, TrueCrypt yells at me. It says, hey, hey, short passwords are easy to crack. You really should use something 20 or more. We're going to go ahead and hit yes. So if we want to use a short password, it'll let us. Now, here's something you want to keep in mind. Again, some nerd talk. You can hit format, and it'll be fine. Um, but if you're looking to make a big TrueCrypt volume and store files greater than 4 gigabytes, it, like big movie files, big archives, uh, you know, DVDs worth of stuff, if you're looking to store big stuff, go to the file system dropdown and choose NTFS. FAT works, it's older, it's more compatible with more things. NTFS works on every Windows computer ever. Most Linux systems and Macs can read it. So everything else you can leave. Now, if you look at this random pool, when I move the mouse, it goes crazy. The, these numbers just change way quicker. This is what we call random salt. It's to help in, uh, in cryptography. The more random salt you have, the, the more random your key's going to be. It's good to have a lot of salt, so you don't want to go nuts and spend hours on this, but, you know, move the mouse around a little. Just, just get it there. Hit format. It'll go through, and, you know, depending on the, on the speed of your computer, it might not go this fast, but it will go pretty fast, uh, especially for, for smaller files. Obviously, if you make a giant, pat, or a giant TrueCrypt volume, it will take a while. Um, TrueCrypt sits there, churns for a little bit, sets all the keys up, comes back with this message, success. We're going to go ahead and hit OK, and then we're done. If we wanted to create a new, another one, we can hit Next. Otherwise, click Exit. Now what do we do? We've got this file here, this vault file. Let's go ahead and, uh, and open up the vault file. Now, on most Windows systems, you just take this 
and drag it. Drag that file into TrueCrypt. Otherwise, we're going to hit Select File and browse for it. Vault. We'll hit Open. And now here's where we choose a drive letter. I'm going to choose Drive Q because I think it's cool. And then we're going to click the Mount button down in the bottom left-hand corner. It's going to come up and ask for our password. And again, we use the very insecure password, password. We'll hit OK. Open up my computer and look at this. Disk Q, just like in TrueCrypt. Now we can put stuff in here, like my secret stuff, full of our passwords, and it works just kind of like a flash drive. So we can go ahead and hit dismount, and look at that, it disappeared. Now, with this data, you want to securely delete it with Eraser or another secure deletion program. Or better yet, don't put your secret stuff on this computer in the first place unless you're saving it to TrueCrypt. So, you should create your, uh, your sensitive files inside of the TrueCrypt volume. Makes things better. Since I'm not really concerned about this, I'll go ahead and just delete it. It can be recovered. But, for the sake of the argument, we'll leave that for another day. So, now we've got this vault file, and because I named it with a .tc, all I have to do to, uh, to open up the vault is double click this, and then click mount. There we go. We'll type in password again. Go back to my computer, and there's disk Q. We can double click this, and open up our secret passwords. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, what if somebody comes up to you, holds a gun to your head, and says, Give me the password to your secret TrueCrypt volume? You go, Oh no! We want to try to throw those people off. We want to trick them. We want to be those kind of guys. So let me show you how to create what's called a hidden volume. A hidden volume, the main difference is that it has two passwords. One password leads into a very, very insecure area where you'll put secret looking data, but not exactly top secret data. The, uh, the other password, the super secret password, will take them to the hidden side. And uh, it sounds like somebody just joined the hangout, so we'll check in here. Howdy, sir. How are things? Hey. I'm, uh... How you doing? Uh, pretty good. I'm right now recording and going through how to create hidden volumes. Nothing too complicated, but I figure the uh, the people should learn. Sure. So uh, let's go yeah, ahead yeah, like and uh, and create a hidden volume then. Let me uh, actually go ahead and throw my desktop into the hangout. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, it's a it's a new feature. It's really cool. Let's see. Is that showing up? Yeah, indeed it is. Cool. So, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to hit Create Volume again, just like before. Create an encrypted file container. And this time, we're going to choose Hidden TrueCrypt Volume. And you can click to learn about hidden volumes and learn the best ways to protect yourself. So we're going to choose normal mode. Direct mode is for something different. We'll cover that in a, uh, in a more advanced TrueCrypt session. And again, we're going to choose, uh, choose a place we're going to store this. This one is going to be Super Secret Vault. And right now we're creating the outside vault, the not-so-safe vault. It's still totally safe, but this is the password you're going to give people if, they, uh, if you end up being coerced or threatened or anything like that. So we're going to again make this 1 gig. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, when you create the outer volume size, your super secret vault, the inner vault, has to be smaller than the outer vault. It sounds easy, but, you know, sometimes you can forget. So, 
Our super secret vault can only be smaller than one gigabyte. We'll go ahead and hit next. And uh, we're going to use a fairly insecure password for the outer volume. So we're going to use password. And we'll hit format here. And TrueCrypt will do its thing. And now, at this point, we want to put some secret-looking data. Not exactly top-secret data, but secret-looking data in the outer volume, just to throw people off. So we're going to put in here tax document, or anything like that. Basically, anything that's, that's private, but potential attackers might have access to. So a very common occurrence is to put tax documents in the outer volume. So something that's not incriminating, something that you won't lose too much privacy over because other people already have that information, such as the IRS and the government. So we'll just say, you know, this is a uh, W-2 form. And, and we'll save that there. That's the only thing we're going to put in there. It basically, it has to look like you were trying to hide something. It's to throw people off. It's a lie. We'll click Next. And now we get to create the hidden volume. So the hidden volume, you can use a different encryption algorithm. You can use the same one. Totally up to you. TrueCrypt will work with it. We're just going to go ahead and use the defaults of AES. And we're going to make the hidden volume only 50 megabytes. It's very small. And we're going to select a, uh, a stronger password, but still pretty bad, password with an exclamation point. Wouldn't take too much to guess that. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And then hit format again. Yep, there we go. We created a hidden volume. Now here's how you use this, and it's really cool. So we've got the super secret vault. We're going to mount this, but this time we're going to use the hidden password, the password with an exclamation point. Now, if we look at drive Q, it's only got about 50 megabytes worth of space. And we're going to go ahead and put our really secret documents here. So that's our totally secret Excel file that we don't want anyone to see. We're going to go ahead and dismount this. And then let's say somebody comes up to us. They've got us held hostage. They're holding our family for ransom. And they want a password. Well, now we can give them a password. We can go ahead and hit mount. And while they're staring over our shoulder, we can type in password. We can type in the outer volume password. Hit enter. And TrueCrypt doesn't even look at the hidden partition. As far as they know, there is no hidden partition. There's nothing hidden about this. They can open it up and they say, ah, oh, it's just a tax document. And they go along their merry way, knowing nothing the wiser. But secretly, we know that there's a hidden area of this. So we can put in the other password. and we get right back to our hidden data. It's very powerful, it's very cool, and uh, it's very helpful. It's especially helpful in areas of the world where there is no privacy, there is no free speech. If, if you look at places like, uh, a, a lot of places in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and Iran comes to mind, I, these kinds of tools help people stay free. They help people trade information. They're very important. They can also be used, you know, if, if you're a kid and you want to hide game files or, or whatnot, um, or, you know, keep siblings from snooping around in your data, this is helpful for that. Um, but uh, it's, uh, TrueCrypt is a very wonderful tool, and it's actually my favorite piece of software out of everything I've ever used. Uh, and that's, that's the basic overview. You can actually use TrueCrypt to do some cool advanced things like completely encrypt a computer. 
So if somebody steals your entire laptop, nothing is lost. Absolutely nothing except the hardware. They can't get in. And again, I will use a disclaimer. If you forget the password to your TrueCrypt volume, there is no backdoor. You will lose all of the data. You will lose access to all of the data. So be careful with it. Uh, but that's the basic general overview of, uh, of TrueCrypt, and I'm sure we'll cover some more advanced things later, like how to dual boot with TrueCrypt, how to put Windows and Linux on the same system while encrypting each one separately with different programs and making them play nice. It's a, it's a little advanced, it's way nerdy, and we'll cover it later. But for now, that's about the end of the first round.